see here. Now, first uh, topic uh, that will be on there, and there's only maybe two, three, maybe five questions at the most on the very basic introductory material regarding you know, different types of graphs, uh, different types of relationships, the difference between an observation and an inference. Um, and so you can see that uh, right here on the screen. Here's an example of an inference type of question. Remember, an inference is a guess. It's a prediction about something that will occur in the future, or maybe it's a, uh, a guess about something that happened in the past. Uh, so you're looking for you know, guesses, something about past tense or future tense. And so the answer in this case uh, would be uh, letter A, damage from the storm is, is expected to be in, uh, extensive, meaning it hasn't happened yet. We're guessing that it will be. All the rest of these are actually measurements, direct observations of something. Uh, number two here, <clears throat> this is related to our mapping unit. So the mapping unit included very basic stuff about Polaris and latitude and longitude and time zones uh, and also uh, stuff related to actually topographic maps, which we'll get to in a second. So let's just start with this basic one here about Polaris. Remember, the altitude of Polaris is equal to the latitude of the observer. So in this case, if Polaris is on the horizon, that means its altitude or its angle above the ground is nothing. It's on the ground. It's on the horizon. Therefore, it's zero degrees. Therefore, it's this person is located at the equator. Okay. If it said directly above them or at the zenith, that would be 90 degrees. That would be the North Pole. And so you have different locations based upon the angle of the star in the sky. So that's something we talked about early on. Here's a very simple latitude and longitude question. Now, most likely this would be a um, multiple choice answer or a question. So you would have to choose from the responses. I didn't make it so here. Uh, but you'll see uh, location D is right here on the map and you want to know the latitude and longitude. Latitude is going from the equator, so going up, that would be north, and you can see it's right on the line, 60 degrees north, and the longitude is from the prime meridian, this line right here, so we're going this way, that's east, so that's 60 degrees east. So your answer would be 60 degrees, sorry, 60 degrees north and 60 degrees east, okay? Uh, and that, by the way, would be multiple choice, like I said. Okay, here's another question that's related to time zones. Remember, time zones are based upon the rotation of the Earth, 15 degrees for every hour. So you make sure you look at the top here and just check what do the lines go by. In this case, they go by 15s, which is convenient because that means every line is one hour. Now, in this case, I want to know what time it is at B. It's 8 a.m. here, and I'm going to go to B. So I'm going to the east, east increase, west is less. So if I jump over, that's one, two, three, four lines. Or if I just say, okay, it's 8 a.m. here, I'm increasing my time. That's 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., noon, 12 p.m. So location B, it is lunchtime, 12 p.m., okay? Now, the other questions related to mapping are related to topographic maps, interpreting topographic maps. And I'm just giving you some sample problems uh, related to a map like this one. You'll see maybe multiple questions related to one single map um, based upon that one single map. So an example of a question related to that would be, where is it steep? And you guys know that where it's steep is where the lines are close together. So, you know, in this general region, it might be like, on what side of this hill is it steep? So the, the lines being close is where it's steep. I'll just write that down, lines close together. Okay, not a specific area, but you know, you get the general idea there. Uh, here's another question. Which way is the creek or the river or the stream flowing? In this case, Co Creek is right here. We can figure out which way it's going by looking at these little V's, right? The V points the opposite way it's flowing. The river is flowing this way toward Calden Pond. You can also figure that out because up here it's 300 and over here it's 200. So it's gotta go downhill towards that direction that direction up that way is northeast. So I would write northeast. And again, that's probably going to be a multiple choice type of question, okay? So remember, opposite the V or towards the lower elevation, okay? Uh, here's another one. What is the elevation of point D on the map? Point D is located right here. It's on a line that's unlabeled, but we can figure out what it is. This is 200, this bold line. This is 300, this bold line. 
the lines go by 20s. It does tell you that right there. And you could have figured that out. That means this is going uphill to D. That means the location D is at 320 feet based upon the fact that it's going uphill. So 320 feet, okay? Here's another question. What's the gradient from X to Y? Now, most likely you're not gonna see a question like this, but you might have to measure distances and that's something that you're gonna need to use a scrap piece of paper for. So I'm gonna go actually to my, my, my uh, iPad over here just to show you this. I would wanna have a piece of paper nearby when I'm doing a question like that. So if I were to measure the distance, you're literally gonna take a piece of paper and put it right on the line on your screen and just mark it right on your screen. So that's X and that's Y right there, okay? Uh, that way I know the distance. Make sure you don't zoom in and out as you do that like I just did, okay? I, you don't wanna zoom in and out because uh, that'll mess you up. Um, but you're gonna take that distance and bring it right down to your scale down at the bottom. And I can tell that the distance there is 2.5 miles. So you're gonna to need to measure stuff right on your screen. That's why you have a scrap piece of paper nearby. I'm just gonna write that down, that my distance is 2.5 miles. And to do gradient, like the question asks, gradient is related to uh, change in field value over distance. I'll write that down, change in field value over distance. And I know my distance now, it's 2.5 miles. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom. What I need to do is figure out what's the change in field value. How much of a change is it from X to Y? Now you can look here, I'll, I'll keep this screen up. If you look right here at X, it's right on the 300 line. So that's one field value. Y is at 200. So I would do 300 minus 200 and the label is feet. And you would just do a little bit of simple subtraction and simple division, okay? So you're going to do 300 minus 200, which is 100 feet over 2.5. And you probably want to have calculator nearby because it's going to be necessary for a few problems. In this case, the answer is 40 feet per mile. Okay. And you'd probably have a multiple choice question or maybe a short answer potentially. So just a heads up, you're going to want to have note card or a piece of paper nearby and your calculator might be necessary too. Okay. So let's go back to the actual test here. Uh, so that's that's one of the uh, uh, other type of questions. Another question is like, what does it look like along a certain line? So in this case, from X to Y, we're going pretty much downhill, straight down a hill. So it's nothing exciting. You might have a, a line going over a hill, so it might go up and then back down again. So you might have to interpret a few profiles, not draw one, but definitely interpret them. Okay, so that's just another sample of a question. Okay, so that's kind of the mapping unit. There's gonna be a few questions, quite a few questions about mapping. Now we move on to our geology unit. So basic questions about minerals, like this question right here. Diamond and graphite, totally different minerals. They look totally different from each other. They're both made from carbon. So why do they have such different properties if they're made out of the same thing? Well, that's that very, very popular answer. They have different internal arrangements of their atoms. So different internal arrangements of carbon atoms. They're arranged differently. They look different. Therefore, they have a different uh, property to them. Okay, The arrangement of the atoms inside of the mineral. That's what makes it that specific mineral. That's what makes it unique. Okay, And then other questions might be related to page 16 of your reference table. So check that out. All right. Other questions are going to be related to the rock unit stuff that we talked about. So igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks, basic questions from your reference table, um, page six and page seven. You're not going to need to do any like calculating of percentages of minerals in an igneous rock, but you know, questions related to that chart. Here's a good one. Lava extruded by a volcano. What's it gonna look like? Well, if it's a volcanic rock, it was at one time liquid, which means it is igneous, narrows it down to C and D. Extruded, is a word that's right on your reference table. You can find that right here on page six. I'll show you. It's right here. Extrusive is right there on the chart. If you look, go across here, you know the texture is very small or fine grained. So the answer to this question is a fine grained igneous rock. Okay. Here's a question that's related to our most, uh, our most recent unit. So the interior of the earth, plate tectonics, 
um, plate boundaries. This is stuff we've been talking about recently. So this question is related to a reference table, page 10. So this is the interior of the earth. I'll go to that page. So we're gonna go uh, page 10, interior of the earth. And specifically, we're looking for a zone that it specifies here that has a density between 9.9 .9 and 12.2 grams per cubic centimeter. And we wanna know what's the pressure in that area. So I'm gonna go here and say, okay, here's 9.9 .9 to 12.2. It's this zone called the outer core. What's the pressure range in that zone? Well, just follow this line down, right? There's the pressure at the beginning of it. And right there's the pressure at the end of it. So it's somewhere between 1.4 ish to maybe slightly above 3 point, maybe 3.1. Okay, so let's see what we get for that one. Yep, it's this one right here. Okay, so that's very specific questions related to that reference table. Here's a question that's related to plate boundaries. And plate boundaries, if you recall, are another reference table page, page five. You're gonna definitely be going to this page for a few of the last questions on the test. And just identifying plates and boundaries and things like that along the map. Now this one's very specific, like what do you find at divergent boundaries? Divergent boundaries are the ones that are typically found in the middle of the ocean like here, the East Pacific Ridge, or you even see it in the middle of the Atlantic, right? The Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So ridges are definitely there. And that kind of narrows it down. So uh, the answer is going to be mid-ocean ridges, rift valleys. Uh, that's like found in Africa. Okay. 